morning everyone <clears throat> it's joe waxman i'm back with another video uh this morning i would like to talk about actress model uh sex symbol marilyn monroe um you know she's been dead quite a while and here we are still talking about her thinking about her at least i am right now um so let's look at her chart and find out what makes her so special all right, Marilyn Monroe, born June 1st, 1926 at 9.30 a.m. in Los Angeles, California. Um, gosh, why? I, all right, I mean, she's got a Gemini sun conjunct Mercury. Uh, it's in the 11th house. Her son is conjunct Aldebaran. So this is the bullseye, okay? And if you know about the different uh, zodiacs, you know the difference between tropical and sidereal. They're not uh, aligned. Uh, they, they, you know, this is a sidereal Taurus essentially because sidereal aims to be aligned with the constellations, whereas tropical is um, aligned with the Earth's movement around the sun, it aligns itself with the uh, equinox um, and the solstices and divides it into equal parts of the year. So it's, it's, a, it's a directional astrology. Um, but um, point being that this is the, the, in the constellation of the bullseye. So that's a prominent, it's a prominent fixed star. And it's also interesting because the sun is the ascendant ruler. Ascendant is in Leo. So the sun rules that. So her, you know, her um, ascendant lord is going into the 11th house conjunct Aldebaran. Aldebaran, um, very powerful star, bullseye. Um, it just gives, I mean, it just, you know, if you're, if you're a, a main planet, like not only just the sun, but the ascendant ruler, is conjunct a powerful star, it's gonna have a big influence, right? So that's one indication, plus the 11th house is career success. Uh, it's hopes, wishes, dreams, uh, groups, networks, uh, gains from the career. It's all about the, the sec success of the career. And she was extremely successful. I mean, this is one of the main significations, plus the sun is strengthened by Mercury in its own sign of Gemini. Right, a planet is in its own sign is very strong and will strengthen whatever planet is near it. Right, so here the sun is incredibly strong, in a very very good position. The career success, the success of the career, conjunct um, a very very main star, Aldebaran, uh, the bull's eye, the eye of the bull. Right, bull's eye, it's the target. It's um, it's a very um, considered a very materialistic but powerful, like kingly kind of star. Um, so it's fitting for somebody who's considered to be, you know, a beauty icon, a sex symbol. Because um, Taurus, bull, beauty, right? And then her MC is in Taurus. So we get that double, um, double Taurus signification there. Um, in Gemini, it also says that she is very intelligent, much more intelligent than we would imagine because her Mercury is influencing her son, it's in Gemini. I mean, she's very clever, very intellectual, right? Um, that's very prominent. And I think that's why, like, not only did she have quite a successful career, in fact, the aftermath of her career is far more, um, successful or uh big than than her career itself like her career was mixed there was a lot of ups and downs um but i but it's almost like the aftermath was bigger than her actual career and that's the 11th house right i mean that's why we can still look back that's why she's like still famous today like as an icon right it was it was she gained more success from her career than the the actual career itself she was in a lot of movies. She she acted. She modeled. Uh, she even started her own um, 
acting, uh, sorry, pr film production company after um, dispute with um, Fox, her, her uh, the film contract, film produce, from film company that she was um, under contract with. All right, um, her moon is conjunct <clears throat> Jupiter in Aquarius. Now moon conjunct Jupiter is fantastic in any sign. I mean, maybe less so in Capricorn, but in Aquarius it's still good. Um, <clears throat> neither of these are very dignified in Aquarius, but Jupiter does have some uh, esoteric uh, significance with Aquarius in that the esoteric ruler of Aquarius in, in esoteric astrology. Um, some people, a lot of people probably don't take that into consideration, but it's worth noting. Um, anyway, Moon and Jupiter love are, are great together. You see this combination in a lot of famous people. Um, in the seventh house, it's adding a lot of, of um, reach to, to the masses because the seventh house is, is the masses. It's, it's the other, it's relationships, one-on-one -on -one individual, but it's also the, the, the large groups of people. And um, here we have this nice trine, even though it's out of orb, it's still, you know, that, that air trine. So again, the intellect is very uh, pronounced here. Um, and a lot of good results, you know, from acting, from this is more about acting. This, you know, it's more about, you know, um, this would not help so much with modeling because that would be more 10th house, first house. Um, but for, for acting, this is really good because seventh house is where we want to reach people, you know, whether speaking or singing. She also sang, but it, I don't think that was very successful. Um, but like speaking, you know, acting. She was in a lot of movies. Um, that's where it really comes in. Um, now, this is really interesting. Her ascendance in Leo, which is fantastic for fame, success, power, wealth, um, all, all the good things. I mean, Leo is a great ascendant in general. Um, if we look, um, there's not only Neptune in the first house, um, there's also true Lilith, which you know, I don't always look at this, but I was like, there's got to be some, I just typed it in and I was like, wow, okay, it's conjunct the ascendant. That's very significant. True Lilith, I mean, that's like the, the what you'd expect for a sex symbol, right? Right on the ascendant. The ascendant is where we get, I mean, it's it's less than a degree. It's it's almost exactly conjunct the ascendant. That That's impressive. Um, and then, you know, mean Lilith, this is true Lilith, this is mean Lilith. Uh, mean Lilith does not mean like it's the more mean one, the nasty one. No, mean means it's an average, but it's it's fun play on words. The true and mean, like the true and mean nodes, true and mean node. This is the true node, this is the mean node. It's the mean nasty node. This is the really true good node. No, just kidding. Um, so we have Lilith on the ascendant, true Lilith. Uh, the the asteroid or what is it? It's not even an asteroid. It's a it's a point, um, but it's it's it, it's got correlations to um, women, fem, the feminine, the sexual, feminine, free, you know, um, overly sexualized. Well, I guess they've all really sexualized it. It has sexual connotations. It's feminine. It's about, you know, women, you know, the empowered woman, the, the empowered sexual woman, right? That drives men nuts and that men love to hate. Um, and that's that's very much Marilyn Monroe. All right. And Neptune's also here. Neptune is about film, photography, uh, creativity, spirituality, um, you know, fantasy. Um, and that's also very much Marilyn Monroe. I mean, she was in photography. She was a model. She was a pinup girl. She was a, you know, an actress, um, and then just an icon, a celebrity. You know, she just blew up and just became this huge, huge iconic figure. For for icon for people with, who would just take on this iconic stature, who just surpass their their the sum of their parts. You know, like she's not just like this model actress, right? She just became like this huge, huge figure. That's always going to be related to the first house and the ascendant, you know, um, either in the 12th house, close to the ascendant or in the first house, 
you know, the closer to the ascendant, the more powerful. And then I was through, I, I threw in series here because obviously it's, it's significant being in the first house conjunct Neptune and series is the mother. It's a fem another feminine asteroid. Um, it more has to do with, um, you know, sometimes you'll see a significant series in like women who have, um, could be eating disorders or, um, you know, just about, you know, f femininity in general, mother issues, mothering, loss of child, things like that. Um, I don't know if that's a, super significant here, but it because of the, the proximity and the position, I, I just left it in. And then this is obviously mean Lilith. Um, so I just thought, because there's why it's wild, it oscillates, it, you know, the, the uh, Lilith moves back and forth a lot. So they put in a, through in a mean, the average. I don't know if I agree with the mean Lilith, uh, but I like that true Lilith is, is on the ascendant here. That's very significant. Um, and these are opposite, the moon and Jupiter, right? Um, so this talks a lot about her relationships. Anything that's opposite the moon is very significant with relationships, very much the same way that the descendant is. Right, it's almost like another uh, ascendant descendant axis for relationships specifically. So, what this is saying is that um, her her relationships are taking on a very deceptive tone, an idealism. I mean, she married who Joe DiMaggio and then Arthur Miller. She also had an affair with well the president, uh, JFK, um, and uh, Marlon Brando. Right, so we're getting like this this you know, this Neptunian sort of idealism in Leo fame, right? These huge figures as partners, these famous, huge idealistic, you know, famous in their own right. Neptune deals with that, that illusion, the illusion of grandeur, right? They're just normal people, but they have the, they're playing very big roles in their life, like she is. And she has this illusion or equality to her whole look, you know, Neptune in Leo on the ascendant with Lilith. I mean, that's, I mean, that's very, very powerful, very iconic. Um, and then her relationships are having that same quality, marrying, you know, Arthur Miller was a famous um, playwright, I guess. And then Joe DiMaggio, famous baseball player, the president, JFK, and then, you know, Marlon Brando's the famous actor. Um, yeah, so a lot going on with relationships. And then, you know, Moon Jupiter in itself, it's huge for relationships. But she did not have an easy life. Uh, for one thing, she grew up um, her, her, not knowing her father. Um, she had a sister who she didn't meet till she was an adult. Her mother was poor and um, put her in a foster home because she thought it would be better and she visited her on weekends. Then later her mother uh, developed schizophrenia, paranoid schizophrenia. So that, I mean, that's Saturn in Scorpio in the fourth house. Um, square, uh, the moon and Jupiter, mother, right? And Jupiter, you know, Jupiter, her, her, her enthusiasm, her philosophy, her faith in life, square of Saturn, it's, uh, it's very detrimental to her own mental health, to her well-being. Saturn square, Neptune here, so reality, delusion, fantasy, you know, like, uh, the reality of her harsh childhood growing up without her father uh, and then later you know like basically an orphan I mean basically she's an orphan um, and she was sexually abused as a child uh, and you know had lived in different places different families and things like that um, very difficult childhood Saturn and Scorpio square and then square Neptune and then she, so she later she turned to drugs Neptune drugs and alcohol right to get away from her very harsh childhood. Uh, Scorpio, Mars in the eighth house, right? Mars rules Scorpio, Mars in the eighth house, eighth house, death, rebirth. Uranus, Uranus can often rep represent trauma. Nep uh, Pisces is again, escapism, uh, drugs, alcohol, fantasy, delusion. I mean, spirituality, creativity, things like that as well. But, and then, you know, this grand water trine Fueling both her, her sexuality, you know, she was a sex symbol, so it's giving her powerful sexuality, but also uh, 
you know, a lot of hidden secrets, drugs, alcohol, abuse, things like that, right? Um, so a lot of really difficult stuff. I mean, we get like some good, good things here. You know, this sun, uh, Mercury, conjunct the 11th house cusp, sun on Aldebron, ruling the first house. I mean, that's very powerful. And that propelled her to very high, high success, as well as, you know, this moon Jupiter in the seventh house is great in the seventh house, moon or Jupiter, and then together it's fantastic, but it's disposited by Saturn. So her relationships are, are not, not going to be very good. They're going to be, you know, having this delusional quality of like this fantasy, you know, like, oh, Marilyn Monroe and Joe DiMaggio, or Marilyn Monroe and JFK, Marilyn Monroe and, you know, Arthur Miller. But um, the reality is that they're not going to be um, very uh, good. I mean, they might have like a great honeymoon period. Neptune often has that, that wonderful you know, surface quality, but then after a while, the, the illusion fades away and it's, it's, it's coming down to, to Saturn and Scorpio, the very harsh reality of her home life, you know, and she turned to drugs and alcohol to escape and to deal with it. Um, Venus is in Aries. Venus is ruling her third house and her 10th house. So her career, um, and that's, you know, that. I think that's good. Venus is not great in Aries, but um, it's a go-getter. Um, <clears throat> and she was difficult to work with on stage. Um, you know, very picky. Uh, she often didn't show up. She was, you know, miss, missed her lines a lot. And it was just very like um, high maintenance, you could say. And I wonder if that's what the, the Chiron is, is um, signifying here. It's out of signs in Taurus, but it's still conjunction by degrees and it's still having influence. And um, so there was a lot of her, her acting career was, was troubled. It was, it was, yeah, she was very successful in a way uh, because of all these things, but at the same time, it was not easy. And um, again, the, 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 the production company Fox did not uh, honor their contract and she took them to court and she actually won. And then she started her own production company. I mean, you know, you go girl. Uh, that's like, I, I mean, uh, okay, we can look to the South Node and Capricorn as being like, you know, very ambitious, very hardworking, which she was. She was as a model, as an actress, she was just a go-getter. And the South, the sixth house is all about, you know, everyday hard work, just working hard, working hard in Capricorn, right? Success. And, um, you know, that we, we saw that. Um, and she, she was in a lot of films, but, um, it was, it wasn't easy for her. And then her career, um, you know, there was a lot of ups and downs, which we can see in the eighth house, eighth house can cause scandals. Um, uh, she, she posed nude when she was younger. And then that became like a scandal when she was older, a little bit older, um, uh, Mars in the eighth house, especially conjunct Uranus, I think can definitely relate to abuse. And that's, I mean, that's Scorpio. So we're, we're seeing, you know, a lot of over-sexualization, um, difficulties around sexuality. I mean, she didn't even live long enough. Um, and sometimes we see North Node in difficult houses when people, you know, or even conjunct Pluto when people die young. Um, sadly. And that doesn't mean if you have North Node in the 8th or 12th, you're going to die young. But um, that, that can be the case for some people, especially North Node. I mean, this is difficult. North Node in the 8th, in the 12th house, in Cancer, conjunct Pluto. This is extremely heavy. I, and I, she did not live till 42. But I mean, 30, I think 36 is when she died. This would have been very difficult. Very difficult North Node. Um, it's escapism. It's, it's Pluto. It's destruction. Pluto in the 12th house is destructive anyway. I have Pluto in the 12th house. You really have to sort of gain control of your life with Pluto in the 12th house. Otherwise, uh, destruction will take over. So, I mean, we can see a lot of really difficult situations here. Um, yeah, I mean, 
or an over sexualization, uh, huge, very extremely difficult childhood, um, delusion in relationships, but this iconic, iconic um, character, Marilyn Monroe, very troubled, but extremely iconic, beautiful. Um, yeah, like just the, the, the symbol, a symbol of beauty, like a classic symbol of, of American beauty. Right, um, which is very interesting. Um, you know, I, Chiron is this Chiron conjunct the MC is 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 unusual. I I, um, I don't exactly know how to make sense of it, except that she was um, she was very very uh, difficult to work with um, because Chiron can represent a, a hypersensitivity. Uh, sort of self-protection when it's conjunct the Venus, especially Venus not in good dignity. I think even as beautiful as she was, she held a lot of insecurities um, and that made her difficult to work with. Um, and I feel like that's why um, that's one of the things that, that caused her a lot of problems. <clears throat> and also she was a lot smarter than anyone gave her credit for. And I remember hearing some stuff about her, like she had other interests that did not get uh, brought to light and she was very smart and um, had other more intellectual interests that um, were just kind of subdued by her by her looks by her whole aura of you know like it's just Marilyn Monroe this this sexual icon you know, this beauty you know queen in movies and model and photos things like that um yeah um the other thing about her relationships is that Jupiter is ruling the eighth house and Moon's ruling the 12th house. Those are both difficult houses to have in the seventh house of relationships. So her relationships were bringing in a lot of difficulty. Uh, could be hidden affairs, secret, you know, abuse, drugs, alcohol, um, all those secret things, right? Eighth and 12th, all the, I mean, in in water signs, water houses, water signs. So very, a lot of, you know, secrecy, affairs, abuse, drugs, alcohol, over, over sexuality, things like that. Um, yeah. Uh, that's, that's pretty much it for Marilyn Monroe. It's a mixed bag, a lot of difficulty and a lot of like, just, you know, extremely strong, iconic beauty, you know, influence and or like tons of sexuality just oozing with sexuality right mars and pisces and eighth house pluto and you know, saturn and scorpio fourth house like this this water trine it's doubled up water it's not just water it's like water water um so yeah anyway that's it for Marilyn Monroe. Um, all right. If you enjoy this content, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and share. Uh, if you want to book a reading, go to my website, macroastrology.com. If you want me to have a look at anyone's chart, a celebrity or a prominent person, write that in the comments. I'll check it out. All right, guys, that's it for now. Thanks. Bye.